As we break bread together, I always get excited about Potluck Sunday. The devil eggs, especially. So, moving on. Uh, after our potluck, uh, we will gather in the sanctuary, those who are interested, and we will watch a video presentation from our bishop. Uh, in the video, Bishop Muller is telling us kind of where we are in the church uh, with respect to uh, the human sexuality issue and uh, the global Methodist church and all that's going on right now just kind of gives you a picture of where we're at and what's going on and next steps. So we we'll have a question and answer time following the video, so I'll be happy to answer any questions for you and uh, talk about the church. We've got annual conference coming up soon, uh, the 1st through the 4th of June, so Tony and I will be traveling to Hot Springs. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll be there until Saturday. So keep us in your prayers as we do the work of the church and represent you. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about annual conference in person. Last year was hybrid, and this year uh, it's, it's all in person. So another opportunity to come together with friends from around the conference. So uh, let's see. I don't know what else I need to lift up. Uh, we do have a lay servant class that will be here Saturday, June 11th. So if you're interested in lay servant ministries in the church, I can give you more information on that if you want to, if you want to reach out to me. But I'm excited for us to be hosting that for the conference. We'll have churches hopefully from around this area uh, sending folks to come and take classes, uh, lay servant Classes, so we'll offer a preaching class and worship class, and, and then a basic lay sermon class. So it's a great opportunity if you're looking for a way to get involved in the church, um, helping with worship or teaching a class. 
uh, great opportunities there for you to, to uh, take classes and learn more about ministries in the church. So excited about that. Any other announcements we need to lift up? Anything I'm missing? Yeah. Let me see. Yes. I heard something. I'm saying up here. Ah, Ken. We will be doing a media shop training on Thursday evening here at the church. Okay. And the other announcement I have is the lady that's sitting next to Tony down there in the black and white dress. 52 years ago, took on a big task. <laughs> <laughs> in our minds as we enter into this time of worship. This is our last day. Thank the Lord. So we will be here as of Thursday night. We will be here praying. <laughs> so, pray for Brad as he. He's <laughs> ready to uh, have us three girls in the house. So, it's going to be a change. A year without us, now he'll have forever with us. God bless him. <laughs> Okay, if you please join with me for the gathering prayer. Lord, we know how easy it is for us to sit here, tethered to our hearts and fear. We get bound up by the chains of distrust. We dare not to hope for so many times before we have been disappointed. So we sit here and wonder where you are. We are not the hard disciples who wonder also. We fear. Oh, Lord, be come with us in our hours. Flood us with your powerful light of love and mercy. Help open our eyes to the good news of your eternal glory. Give to us visions of the place in which love and hope will reign. For ever our stubborn resistance to your mercy and your love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that you will stand in your 
are able, and join me in the call to worship. We come together this day, drawn by the light of God's love. In God's eternal room, peace and hope reign. Let all the people praise God with their music and their voices. Let all the people praise God with their deeds of loving kindness. Praise be God. Amen. Now if you'll join in the hymn, This is the Day, we'll sing it twice on page 67 and also on the screen. Advertising campaign in 2001. 
Y'all are familiar with that, right? Open hearts, open minds, open doors. I think it beautifully captures who we are as United Methodists. This big tent church, right? Um, it, it's one of the things that really drew me to the United Methodist Church many years ago was this idea of open hearts, open minds, and open doors. I grew up in a denomination that wasn't really that open. I mean, there were some issues there. And I just didn't feel at home. There was this spirit of legalism, really, if I can be so honest. And, and I still love the church I grew up in. But when I first went to a United Methodist church and heard the message of grace and saw how the people welcomed everyone in, it was so refreshing. And I felt at home. And I knew that's where I needed to be. It was really an incredible thing. It was a spiritual moment for me. It was, it was, it's hard to put into words exactly how I felt. But it's this message of God's grace. This amazing grace that we sing about. We hear it preached from, from pulpits in all different kinds of churches. And, and I don't think we have the market cornered on God's grace. Don't get me wrong. But there is this understanding that God loves us for who we are, where we are. Right? In spite of who we are, God loves us and accepts us for who we are, where we are. Now, as good Wesleyans, we believe that God loves us too much to leave us the way we are. Thank God for that. Amen. <laughs> Ellie, right? Amen. Ken's not the same man he was years ago. None of us are the same men or women that we were years ago, right? Hopefully. If we are pursuing God's grace and allowing God's grace to pursue us, if we are serious about our faith and growing in our faith, if we attend worship and and we participate in the ministries of the church and, and we search the scriptures and, and we serve the poor and we visit the sick and we fast and we pray together. We're not going to be the same. God loves us too much to leave us the way we are. And as I think about the church, I mean, I grew up in the church, but there was a time when even though I attended church regularly all the time there was a time when I really left the church you know what I'm talking about when I kind of checked out I mean I was in the church but I wasn't in the church God never left me and that's a wonderful blessing and it's a wonderful testimony to God's grace and I look at people who have come into the church who never grew up in the church who, who just had this encounter with someone who had this experience, this spiritual experience where God's grace met them where they were and used someone to speak the truth of God's grace into their lives and they come into the church. I've got a good friend who shares his story about coming into the church. He was one of those we would consider an other you know, he was into all kinds of stuff, drugs, and and he was just, can I say he was a hell raiser? Because that's what I just did, didn't I? He was a bad dude. I mean, he was, he joked about how when he came into the church, he experienced Jesus and he felt his life was changed, but he continued to smoke marijuana for a year down by the river after he experience the life-changing power of God's grace. But over time, his life began to change and he began to give up some of those things, the drinking and the pot smoking and, and some of the things that define who he was before this encounter with Christ. 
God accepted him for who he was, where he was. The church accepted him with all of those little bruises that he brought with him, with all of those imperfections. The church accepted him for who he was, where he was, and allowed the space for God to work in his life and transform his heart and his mind. And he became one of the most giving, loving people I've ever known. Going out of his way to seek out homeless folks, living under bridges, building relationships with them, encouraging them. I remember one story where he, he met this homeless veteran and he invited him to come live in his home and he helped him get the benefits that this veteran was not taking advantage of, had no idea because he was so caught up in alcoholism. And my friend helped him get through all that and get on his feet. It's just a beautiful testimony of how God uses us and calls us to go places that we might not think we should be going. Places that are pretty uncomfortable. It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful testimony to God's grace. And really that's, when I think about the church and what, what the church should look like, shouldn't it look like a bunch of messed up people coming together to <laughs> worship God? None of us are perfect. If you think you are, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> the reason why we are here is because we know we're not perfect. We need God's grace. And we come to this place every week so that we can be reminded of our need for God's grace, so that we might experience God's grace through the hymns that we sing, through the, through the time that we share together, sharing our lives and our stories and how things are going in our life and, and hearing the word proclaimed and, and partaking of the Lord's Supper, right? And eating deviled eggs and coconut cream pie in the fellowship hall. None of us are perfect, but we come together as imperfect people to experience the perfect grace of a loving God who has created each one of us and you know, I believe this God is patient, this God we worship. This God is understanding. God knows that we have not yet arrived to where we need to be, right? And, and we get frustrated because sometimes we think, oh, I messed up again. I yelled at that lady in the Walmart checkout line. I need to stop doing that, right? knows that we're going to make mistakes. And I think it's a reminder when we remember our need for God's grace, we remember that others need God's grace as well. Right? I remember the words of John Wesley in his sermon, Catholic Spirit. Catholic meaning uni universal. Lowercase c again. I'm not going to go through all that like I did last week. But in his sermon, Catholic spirit. Wesley said, though we cannot think alike, may we not love alike. May we not be of one heart. Though we are not of one opinion, without all doubt we may. Herein all the children of God may unite, notwithstanding these smaller differences. We're not all alike. We all have our own struggles. We all have our own challenges. We come from different backgrounds different faith traditions even, but here we are together, right? You are here hopefully because you experience open hearts, open minds, and open doors. We are called to be a welcoming people. The church is called to welcome all. We are called to open our hearts, minds, and doors to all people. The apostles were called to go Paul had this vision. God was calling him to go to Macedonia to preach the good news, to share the good news 
with those in that busy, thriving town. And so he goes. And they go and they minister to the people there and God's grace works through them. It's a beautiful thing. Harry Brenton in his book The Welcoming Congregation Roots and Fruits of Christian Hospitality writes this is the challenge of Christian hospitality to embrace all people as God has embraced us in Christ. He shares a story about a small community of French Protestants in Le Chambon. This small community of French Protestants rescued Jews during the Second World War. Citizens in this small community, they opened their homes, their schools, and churches to strangers with quiet, steady hospitality and made Le Chambon the safest place for Jews in all of France. Residents defined a neighbor as anyone who needed help. A neighbor is anyone who needed help. And by doing so, saved the lives of approximately 5,000 people who were being persecuted by the Nazis. When the police asked their pastor, Andre, Andre Trochme, to turn in the Jews, he responded, we do not know what a Jew is. We know only men and women. In the face of terrible danger, he and his congregation were an uncommon Christian community that took a bold stand based on common human identity. They knew that every stranger is created in the image of God, made in the same human flesh. I wonder how different our community would be if when we walked out these doors, we saw every single person as created in the image of God. If we saw Jesus in every person we encountered, if we treated every person we come into contact with with dignity, right? If we allow the love of God to flow through us and into the lives of everyone we come into contact with. Really, the question for us today, I believe, is what kind of church do we want to be? Who do we want to be, Clinton First United Methodist Church? Do we want to be that church that's known as exclusive? The church that, that closes its doors to certain people? People who may not look exactly like us? People who may not dress as nicely as we dress, right? people who may speak another language? Do we want to shut our doors to certain people? Or do we want to truly live into this call of Christ to have open hearts, open minds, and open doors? I want my life to be open to others. I want when when I have an encounter with even the most unlovable people, and there are plenty of unlovable people out there, aren't there? That, that when they have an encounter with me, that somehow, some way, they don't have this encounter with me, but they have an encounter with Jesus. Right? Is that possible? Yes. I believe it is possible. I believe it's more than possible. I believe that's what God desires from each and every one of us is that when we go into the world that people don't interact with us but they interact with a loving Jesus. I want to be Jesus with skin on as one of my Assembly of God preacher friends says. 
be Jesus with skin on. Right? C.S. Lewis said, be a little Christ. That doesn't mean we're being God, okay? I know it sounds funny. But you know what I'm saying, don't you? That the love of God would flow through us so much that people can't help but scratch their heads and say, wow, I truly feel valued. I truly feel loved as a human being. I think our world's hungry for that. I think our world needs that. I think when I look around in our community, I see a lot of hurting people. And I know many of you see more people than I see. Those of you who work in the courts, you see the pain, you see the heartache. Maybe some of us need to come down and visit and see the sadness, see the heartache. See the despair and invite God to use us somehow in some way to bring healing and hope. That's what open hearts, open minds, open doors is all about. We don't have to all believe the same, think the same, vote the same, but we are all called to love the same. Amen? Amen. We are all called to share the love of Christ. That's what it's all about. I pray that we, that I, will always be faithful to that call. That my table will always be big enough. That I will always have room at my table and in my heart for anybody who needs to experience the love of Christ through me. May it be so for us. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able and join with me in the affirmation of faith. The Apostles' Creed is number 881 in our United Methodist Singles. The words are also on the screen. Let us join together as we affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at the month of time, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Temporary knee replacement done, and so 
kind of doctor felt really good about uh, the surgery, and, and so uh, please continue to really have her. He's got to keep his leg straight for, I think, six weeks, is that, or two weeks? Two weeks, I believe. Um, so cannot bend his left leg. Other prayer concerns this morning? Will it? Yes. Thank you. Linda Marsden uh, was in an automobile accident last week, um, struck by a motorcycle doing 140 miles per hour. And uh, Linda sustained a broken femur, cracked sternum, and a broken rib, I believe. So she was pretty banged up. So we continue lifting her up in prayers. Tony, did I see you? Yes. Do remember Billy. Okay, yes. And Faye Rogers. Billy and Faye Rogers, yes. Others? Yes. Tammy Andrews. Tammy Andrews. With her rib, with the uh, leg was in rib, rib Okay. Yes, Tammy. The family that is on the prayer list, Aaron Rogers, someone who just with his heart in Tennessee, and several other will be in the summer. All right. Yes. So continue praying for the family of Aaron Rogers. Other prayer concerns? that are being lifted up right now, silent prayers and unspoken prayer concerns. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy One, we come together thinking about all those who are going through difficult times. God, we think about those who are struggling in these difficult economic times and often, Lord, we don't know how to even express to you our prayers. We just can't seem to find the words and yet we are reminded in the scriptures that we don't have to know how to pray. That, that in those times when we just can't find the words that your spirit is interceding on our behalf. And so God, we know that you have heard our prayers this morning and we know that, that you know those things that weigh heavy on our hearts and our minds. So we ask God that you would comfort those who are hurting. Comfort us. We all stand in need of your healing mercies and grace. And remind us, God, that your promise is to never leave us nor forsake us. That you are holding each one of us in the palm of your hand. Give us the strength, O oh God, to, to do more than just pray. Help us, God, to, to go and do whatever we can do to ease suffering around us. Help us, God, to take action in our world, not just to sit back and send thoughts and prayers, but, but to actually do, to, to pick up the phone and call someone is hurting, someone who we know is going through grief, someone who is alone. Help us, God, to, to do. God, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in fellowship with one another in this community of faith that is so strong and so supportive. It is such a blessing to be a part of the family of God. We know that 
when we lift our prayers to you, there are others praying as well. As we pray for our nation and our world, where there is conflict, God, may there be peace. Be with refugees who have been displaced from their homes. Be with soldiers who are in harm's way. Be with our world leaders, God, and, and somehow, some way, experience a word from you. We believe, God, that you are reconciling all things, that the work you are doing in our world is, is a work of restoration and reconciliation, and that, that, that one day there will be peace, there will be no more war, there will be no more strife. That all those things will pass away. And there will be a new heaven earth and we long for that oh God and, and so may it begin with us do your restoring and reconciling work in us in our relationships at home and with each other bring your kingdom it is the way of Jesus even Jesus Christ our Lord and so hear us now as we pray the prayer of is saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward at this time for this morning's times and offerings. Let us pray. God, you have given us the gift of your grace through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through the gift of grace, we have experienced forgiveness and healing and mercy. God, you, you have given us new life. And so as a celebration of this new life, this tremendous gift you have given us, we give back to you and we ask God that you would pour out your blessings upon these gifts. May they be used to bring your grace and your love into our community and beyond. In Christ's name we pray.
One of the things we did yesterday was rearrange a little bit of furniture. You may have noticed, you may not have noticed, but we brought the altar table up a little bit. Uh, and so I'm going to be a little closer to you on the first Sunday of the month when leading Holy Communion. And I love that. It just it felt like I was so far away, especially for all the back row Methodists. <laughs> So we moved it up, and I love it. We also brought the baptismal font out and put it in a spot where it needs to be, I believe. It's a beautiful baptismal font. And it is a beautiful reminder of our mission as Christians, as followers of Jesus. And so starting today, I'm going to invite you in this invitation to Christian discipleship, if you would like to come forward and run your hands through the water and remember your baptism, remember that you are claimed by God, right? That God has claimed you and that God is working in your life, then I invite you to come and remember your baptism. Just run your fingers through the water. And you're, you're welcome to spend some time at the prayer rail and prayer but I want to invite you to do that if you feel ready to do that. And may we all accept that invitation to discipleship. May we all accept Christ's invitation to go where he calls us to go. Now, our closing hymn is God be with you till we meet again. We're going to meet again in the fellowship hall here in just a few moments. We're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. And for the benediction, I'm going to pray for our meal. Amen? Amen? That way, when you get down there, you can just go right on in and eat. Nobody's going to be waiting for the preacher to show up. So, because when I usually go down there, folks are getting a little antsy, ready to eat. So, let us lift our voices and sing, God be with you till we meet again, verses 1, 3, and 4. It's number 672 in our hymnals. The words are also on the screen. I invite you to come if you feel like it.
God, we give you thanks for another day, for giving us the opportunity to come together in your name, to worship you, to praise you, to fellowship with each other. And God, as we prepare to break bread together, we ask God that you would nourish our bodies. And may our time of fellowship, sitting at the tables together and breaking bread together, may that time nourish our souls. And as we go from there into the world, into our community, we ask God that, that we would be bread for others, that, that through our lives and through our testimonies and through our witness, our friendship, that others would come to know your amazing grace. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sir.